James Luxon, delighted to be joined with Ellis Grant. Ellis, how you doing, mate? Yeah, more good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Thank you, mate. Very good. Um, a big time for yourself at the moment. Obviously, your pro debut coming up very soon, 17th of February uh, in Liverpool. Talk to me a little bit about the preparation first of all. How's that been? And is it any different to preparing for your amateur fights? Yeah, so so far preparation has been going very well. Um, it is a little bit different because I feel like the pro game is more you know slow down, settled compared to the amateurs, where amateurs like more of a hundred mile an hour type thing. So I'm more like learning, working on life, picking my own shots, doing the correct thing, no mistakes, this that the other. But yeah, it's been going very well. How's that been for you to make that adjustment to slow it down? It's not you know your point scoring as such, not in and out on your toes all the time. Yeah, so it took a while for me to, um, you know, slow it down a little bit because I was such an aggressive amateur and obviously working on such a fast pace, it, it does take a lot for me to slow down, this, that, the other. But, yeah, being listening to me, coach, everything's going very well. So, yeah, I'm happy with myself that I've slowed it down now. Fantastic. Uh, you mentioned you was an aggressive amateur. You was also a successful amateur. Talk to me through your amateur career and your, your proudest and your favourite moments. Yeah, so my proudest moment was obviously when I won the Nationals in 2017. I then went on to box for England in the Tri-Nations. Um, I think I've had about 50, 56 fights in the amateur. I think I lost eight or nine or something like that. But yeah, um, I've won two titles as well, uh, as well as box cups, won the whole box up in Monkstown. And why have you decided to turn pro now? Obviously, you know, 56 amateur fights. Why do you feel now is the right time to turn over? Because I feel I'm, I'm at the age now where I, you know, I, want, I, want, I want to go on to something more. And I've always had it in my head to turn pro. To, it's just always been in my head. So, I'm, yeah, I'm happy it's happened now. Take me back even further before your amateur career started and the first time you walked into the gym. Firstly, why did you go to the gym? And do you remember your first day in the gym? Yeah, so I think I was around seven when my brother, he used to box for the Golden Gloves, you know, the old one, and started on with him. But I was literally seven years old, just a kid messing around in the gym. But even then, fell in love with it. And then he then went up and met me amateur boxing gym, Transport. He went there and I, one day he just asked me to go down with him. So went down with him, met the coaches, started training, fell in love with it and just started on ever since. Was that just a case of, obviously, just followed your brother, you wanted to do what your brother was doing, whatever it might have been, you wanted to sort of be there and copy him, essentially? Yeah, so I think he only had a few fights, but then, obviously, he was in that, the environment, the, the boxing, training, this, that, the other. And as soon as I got down there, I just fell in love with the sport and carried it on. A lot of kids who do go to the gym at a young age will leave very quickly as well, because, obviously, a lot of kids won't like getting punched in the face. They won't like the hard work, the the discipline and the effort you've got to put in as well, I suppose. Why for you did you stick to it? Why did you love it so much? Because it's always been in my head, like, what if? Like, what if I could win that? And I went on to win that. Um, everything, I think everything I've been in, I've won. So it's now it's a case of what if I can do that in the pros? What if I can do this? Does that set your bar higher, your mentality and your mindset? Like you say, you, you want to win everything you enter and you pretty much have. Does that set your bar very high for the pro game? Yeah, definitely. Which I'm obviously more determined than ever, more training harder than ever. Because I know what's at, at, at stake, you know what I mean? I'm in there with a fighter. That's starting to knock me off, so, yeah. Talking about boxing in Liverpool, you know, it's it's a fighting city. Um, a lot of successful boxers coming out of the city. We recently had Tasha Jonas headline the arena against Michaela Mayer and on the undercard, a few local fighters. Steve Clark first comes to mind. He made his debut. Is it encouraging for you to see the success of these guys coming through the ranks from Liverpool? Yeah, definitely, because I, I know the lads as the amateurs and uh, obviously seeing them in the amateur and then seeing them in the pros just... I've got it in my head, like, that, that can be me, you know what I mean? Do you see yourself on that stage as well? You know, like Steve Clark debut on Sky Sports TV show, great platform. You've got your Joe McGrail, your Peter McGrail. You know, they've all come through. I know Joe probably started on a bit of a smaller horse scene before he came onto the bigger platform. But for yourself, do you see that as your first 
almost your first goal, you know, as you, as you build up the rankings to get on that platform to then click, start collecting your titles. Yeah, I definitely see myself on the on them platforms in the future. It's just a case of work my way up and you know, making sure I've been right, winning every fight. And definitely will be on one of them platforms in the future. Do you have any boxing heroes from Liverpool or outside? So I would say my all time favourite boxer would be Canelo. But I, I've always watched him, I love his style. Um, Evan Bolton, he's probably my all time favourite boxer. How did you feel when he fought Callum and then obviously Liam as well as two scousers? Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, you know, they're from Liverpool themselves, but I think Canelo's just on a different level. Did that also show you? You know, from the same city, it shows you the heights you can reach as well. Yeah, it definitely does because it shows me, you know, anything's possible. Anything's possible in this game. Like, if you, you crack, crack on with it, get your head down, stay in the gym, keep training, 100%, yeah. And for yourself, obviously, we mentioned your pro day coming up. You've been working hard towards that, making a few adjustments in camp. Have you envisioned what it's going to be like to make your, your ring walk and obviously in the ring for the first one's professional? You've got, obviously, a, I'm assuming a bigger crowd than you've ever fought in front of as an amateur. Um, people will be cheering for your name. You're having to sell tickets, things like that. There's other things yeah. outside of the ring that goes on that people may not see. Have you sort of looked into that and are you sort of looking forward to all that side of it as well? Yeah, me, so I think about it every day. I, can't, I literally can't wait. <laughs> but what, what do you picture? What's your ideal scenario? Obviously, a victory, of course. But in terms of the build up to it, you know, when you're in the dressing room, what, what what's gonna what do you want to ideally to play out? Yeah, so when I'm in the dressing room, I'll just keep me cool, keep me head straight, know my game plan and hopefully everything will be all right. Hopefully everything will go my way. For you, is it tunnel vision, you know, as, as an amateur, was it always a case of right, fight ready now, tunnel vision, my opponent, etc. Just sit there and like you say, stay stay calm, stay ready and be good to go essentially. Yeah, definitely some vision. You know, just take one fight at a time. Just yeah, I've made it straight with it. A lot of pros say they they block out the sound of the crowds and they don't really hear the outside influence of the ring. How how do you think you'll manage that with the crowds? Like I say, be cheering there, cheering your name, and like I say, I'm sure it's gonna be a different atmosphere to what you've ever experienced as an amateur. Yeah, I get what they mean because like you know when you're in the ring, you sometimes you. You can't hear no one from the outside. You you literally just focus, but I think that I think it'll be the same. I'll be focused on my fight, blocking it, every noise out. You know, sticking to my plan. We've mentioned um, your training. You can obviously go for your pro debut. You've been at your gym currently. Current trainer Lee modeling you for the last about a year and a bit. Um, talked about the relationship there yourself and Lee, and how important that is between a fighter and a coach. Yeah, it's very important because I'm spending a lot of time with him. So it's good to get that, that connection with him on a different level. Um, so we, just so he knows me as a fighter inside and out. And I know him as a coach inside and out. I know what to, what to do, listen to him, just that do that. And how vital is that come fight night? You know, when you're in the corner between rounds, you've got to take on the information he's giving you, but you need to make sure it's the right information as well. How important is that balance uh, between, you know, him as a coach and him as a, a friend? Oh, yeah, it's very important because, you know, when you're in the fight and when you're between rounds, you, you need to be fully focused on what he's telling you to do and listen to everything he's telling you to do and take it on board when you're going into the next round. And just finally, Ellis, for yourself, in terms of, let's say this year, obviously we're very early on in the year, you're getting out of your doors there. How active do you want to be, ideally for yourself, 2024? How many fights in come end of the year? Ideally, I want to be as, as active as possible. Maybe, hopefully, I'll have five fights at the end of the year. You know, I want to be, if, if it was my way, I'd be out every month. And again, just finally for yourself, what's your ambition? Everyone wants to be a world champion. We know that. Um, let's see the very clear and obvious answer for every boxer to say they want to be a world champion, want to be undisputed, etc. But for <clears> you, <throat> you more than that for yourself that you want to get out of your boxing career? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's everyone's game plan to be world champion, but I think I've got to just take it one step at a time because I've literally just turned over. Uh, trying to get the first title and step on to the title like the English title and the British title it's definitely in, in the plan like
Is that where you're looking through the domestic route, the you know the traditional route? Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best of luck for your debut. Not that you will need it, um, but we'll catch up again soon after the debut with a, a victory under your belt and one eye. Yeah, definitely 100% mate.